So at first when I started to work with Godot, depth texture was a mystery for me. In the most simplest word that I can say, I have no idea how to use this data in shader. Depth texture is useful in many cases. A great example of that is water. With depth texture, you can determine the depth of the water and you can change the look of the water based on that. Depth texture also has been changed a little bit in Godot 4 and we are going to discuss about that. So first I should explain about this. This is our camera and the camera will render everything between near plane and far plane. Here also the coordinate system is like this. The negative Z axis is where camera is facing. And remember this negative Z axis. And the X and Y axis are like this. This is basically called view space. So everything outside of this area will be clipped and it will be not rendered. Also it is good to know that you can change the near and far plane in camera setting. So the rendering pipeline is going to map this view space to another space which is called normalized device space. Rendering pipeline has many steps, so I don't want to confuse you about that and we are going to only focus on this step. So the range of the render area in normalized device space is between minus one to one for each axis. But the point is that the normalized device space is a little bit different for different graphical API. Don't be scared. It is not going to be different really too much. Just the Z axis in direct X and Falcon is between zero and one. And in OpenGL, it is between minus one to one. And basically this need one line of code adjustment, which we will see later. So how we can transform the render area from the view space to the normalized device space. In the first space, we have some position. For example, we have the position of the vertices or pixels. It does not matter which, but we have some position. So now we want a function which we provide to that the position of the first space and it will give us the position in the second space. This is done in two steps. First, we put our position inside a vector four like this. By the way, the force component is one. Then we multiply the projection matrix to this. So what is the projection matrix? You know, I'm not going to the mass of the projection matrix, but basically this projection matrix is provided to us in the fragment shader in Godot. So this will give us a new vector, which has also four component. So the first step is done. The second step is to divide all of our component to W. After doing that, we have our position in the normalized device space. So I don't want to discuss about the mass behind this, but there are a lot of videos which they explain the mass behind this formula. Well, I hope you understand what is happening here. Now in Godot shader, you have access to the depth buffer in the normalized device space. And you know, having our depth in this space is not so much useful and we cannot use that. So what we can do is to do the opposite thing that we did above. We should create a formula that we provide the depth buffer in the normalized device space and it will give us the depth in the view space. And the interesting part is if you don't know about all of this stuff, you will have no idea how to work with this data. So there are two ways to do that. One way is to multiply the inverse projection matrix to this and obtain our position in the view space. But here we care only about Z component. And by multiplying the inverse projection matrix, we do an extra work to calculate X and Y also. So there is a more efficient way to do that. Let me show you the projection matrix first. This is the projection matrix. And as you can see, most of its components are zero. I don't care how this matrix is made. Basically this matrix is provided to you inside Godot shader. As I don't care about these values, let me replace them with the component with its corresponding indices. One thing to note here is that in real mass, the indices start from one, but inside shader and in general in programming languages, the indices start from zero. In another word here, I wrote these indices in OpenGL way. 
I will give you the final formula, don't worry about the math stuff, but for those who are interested in the math part, let's see how we can calculate this. So here we care only about the Z component and W component. Then I just write the matrix multiplication only for these two parts. First I should calculate Z and then W. Then divide Z to W and this will give us the normalized device coordinate. Now just by using our knowledge in mathematics, we can solve this equation for Z in view space. And I can obtain this formula. Let's do that in Godot. Okay, this is my plane and this is my empty shader. First, we should grab our depth texture. In Godot 3, you could access depth texture with depth texture variable. But in Godot 4, we can access depth texture this way. The tricky part here is that you should specify hint depth texture and you are done. Okay, now I sample from my depth texture and I put that into a float variable. And as you all know, when we read from a texture, the return value is between 0 and 1. So depth is between 0 and 1. Now remember that I told you the depth texture is different between different graphical API. In Falcon, it is between 0 and 1. And that means the depth texture is okay here. And we are good to go. But if you use OpenGL, it is between minus 1 to 1. So that means if you use compatibility as your renderer, which use OpenGL, you should remap this between minus 1 to 1. And you can do that this way. But as right now, I am working with Falcon, I comment this line. Well, now we use the formula that we obtained previously to calculate the depths in the view space. The original value of the depths is negative. That is because the camera is looking always in the negative direction. But if you remember, in our formula, we had a minus. So I remove that. So we get a positive value here. So our depth now is positive. Let's put this into albedo and see what it does. I also multiply that with a small number so we can see better what is happening. As you can see, this is working. But right now, the depth value is changing when I move toward or away from the plane. And that is because the depth is the distance from camera to whatever behind our plane. How we can fix that? The good news is, in fragment function, we have the distance to each pixel of our plane from the camera. And as we already calculated distance to the train behind the plane from the camera, we can obtain the distance from the plane to the train behind it. Okay, let's do that. So one thing to note here is that the camera is looking toward negative Z axis in view space. And because of that, the vertex that Z is negative already. And if you remember, the depth is positive. So I just add them together and this will give us the depth behind the plane in our shader. I hope everything is clear up to this point. If you have any question or suggestion, let me know in the comment section. Have a good time. Until the next video. Bye.